The Doorman, a short story. John stared at the flashing cursor on the blank document. Just write, he told himself. For once, just start. The words didn't come. He closed the laptop and left his dinghy apartment. A walk might clear his head. John lived in a run-down neighborhood a few blocks from downtown. Trash littered the streets. Graffiti coated the brick walls. He passed a small group of men drinking cheap beer in a dilapidated doorway. Hey, man, got a cigarette? John shook his head and kept walking. He hunched his shoulders, arms folded tight across his thin frame. As he neared the end of the block, a potent smell hit his nostrils. The sweet, acrid scent made his eyes sting. He didn't need to look. John knew. It was the doorman. The doorman stood at the mouth of the alley, swathed in shadow, a twisted lump of a man, bent and misshapen. He took a long drag from the burning cigarette pinched between deformed fingers. John veered left. Avoidance remained his best strategy. Take a detour and hope the doorman didn't notice him. He kept his head down as he crossed the street. Just get past, get through. John repeated the silent mantra. John! The gruff voice stopped him cold. Hesitantly, John turned to face the alley. The doorman stared at him with roomy eyes set deep in a craggy, pock-marked face. He beckoned John closer with a gnarled hand. John braced himself. No sense running now. He shuffled toward the doorman, each step feeling heavier. You look uneasy, my friend. The doorman's voice was raspy, grating, yet soft, intimate. John said nothing. He'd learned the hard way that silence often proved the wisest path. The doorman took another drag. A billow of foul smoke bloomed around his head in a yellowed haze. Why do you fear me? John looked everywhere but the doorman's face. Down at the grimy pavement, up at the narrow strip of night sky visible between brick walls. I... I don't know what you mean, John managed to reply. Don't play coy, the doorman chuckled, a dry, wheezing sound. You aren't fooling anyone. John's eyes flicked down to the cigarette gripped in twisted fingers. He watched the ghostly trail of smoke drift and eddy, momentarily mesmerized. The doorman stepped closer, too close. The sour stench of decay engulfed John. Look at me, the doorman said, his tone low and conspiratorial. Take a good long look at these wretched features, and then look within yourself. John felt the doorman's hot, rancid breath on his cheek. Sweat beaded on his brow. You aren't so different, my friend. You think you're normal, but you have no idea what sickness lurks within your soul. The doorman leaned even closer, oozing menace. John quailed, frozen in place. Sooner or later... The monster will show its face, clawing and gnashing and desperate to escape. John's own harsh, rapid breathing was the only sound as the doorman stared at him, unmoving. The seconds stretched, unbearable and suffocating. Then the doorman shifted. He raised the cigarette toward John's face. The glowing tip hovered scant inches from his eye. You have been warned, he breathed. Fail to heed me at your own peril. John stumbled backward, mumbling a hasty goodbye. 
he pivoted and hurried away without looking back. His hands trembled, his heart pounded against his ribcage. John sought refuge in the safety of his apartment building. Only once inside his small flat did he allow himself to relax, slumping against the closed door. John unbuttoned his shirt collar and loosened his tie. He ran shaky fingers through disheveled hair. After taking several steadying breaths, he went to the kitchenette. John opened the cabinet above the stove and retrieved a dusty bottle of whiskey. He didn't bother with a glass, taking a generous swig directly from the bottle. The harsh liquor scorched his throat and burned in his gut but it also steadied his nerves, slowed his racing pulse. Eventually, John returned to his laptop. He opened the blank document once more, exhaling heavily. Just right, he told himself again. Just get started. John's fingers found the keys. The first words emerged, slowly at first, then gaining momentum. The doorman always knows, John typed. He knew from the first time they met, years ago when John was just a kid. Before the accident, before everything went so terribly wrong. The house was quiet, too quiet. John crept down the hallway, dust motes drifting in the slanting rays of early morning sunlight that filtered through lace curtains. The wood floor creaked beneath his bare feet. He tiptoed up to his parents' bedroom. The door stood slightly ajar. Mom? Dad? John called out in a hushed voice. It's time to get up. No response. John inched the door open. His father was there, in bed, just as John expected. But he wasn't moving and a dark brown stain had seeped into the sheets, spreading out in an ever-widening blotch. John frowned. Where was his mother? Daddy, wake up, he pleaded. Please? His father remained unnaturally still, flat on his back, vacant eyes staring rigidly at the ceiling. John couldn't wake the dead. He turned and fled the room, hurtling down the narrow hallway. His small steps pounded out of frantic rhythm on the bare floor. John's breaths came in ragged gasp. Mom? He called out shakily, fighting back tears. Mom, where are you? From the front door, John heard a soft thumping sound, a dull repetition of something solid striking wood. Cautiously, he crept toward the living room. With trembling fingers, John grasped the doorknob and gently pushed open the door, stealing himself for whatever he might find on the other side. There was his mother. She hung by a length of rope from the ceiling fan, slowly twisting, spinning in lazy circles. John watched in mute horror as the body turned and revolved over and over, one bare foot connected with the front door in a repeated metronomic thud. No, John choked out between shuddering breaths. Tears rolled down his ash-pale face. No, 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 he thought helplessly, a silent scream echoing through the depths of his shattered childhood innocence. This can't be real. It's not real. Strong hands seized John's shoulders. A gaunt, looming figure suddenly appeared in his field of vision, blotting out the horror. It turned John around, steering him firmly toward the open door. Come along, child, a gruff voice rumbled. You have seen enough. John staggered numbly toward the figure's relentless shove. He tried to look back, catch one more glimpse of his mother's twisted form but the figure kept propelling him forward. Do not fight it, the voice said soothingly. Acceptance will make the pain pass quicker. 
John staggered down the porch steps, his feet scraping bare concrete. They reached the sidewalk, and still the figure remained, a looming, hunched presence by his side. John looked up at his apparent benefactor, blinked slowly, struggling to focus his bleary, tear-stained eyes. It was no man, at least not a normal one. The figure was severely disfigured. An unnatural hunchback curved and bent the spine sharply. Twisted limbs protruded at odd angles, the hands a hideous tangle of wasted flesh and yellowed claws. Most disturbing of all was the face. Mere glimpses of it seared themselves into John's memory like white-hot brands. The cratered, sallow visage ravaged by a mosaic of oozing sores. Pustules clustered and festered around the hollows where eyes should have been. A pale slug writhed from a sunken pit in place of the nose. The doorman, as John would soon learn to call him, had arrived. The monster said nothing at first, simply placed a hand on John's small shoulder and steered him down the cracked sidewalk. Block after block they walked in silence, John too numb and confused to fight or protest. Finally the doorman rumbled, I know what you just witnessed seems like an inhuman nightmare, but I assure you, child, it is all too real, and it is far from the worst you will face if you shrink from the path ahead. John fought down dry heaves, his stomach threatening to expel what little he'd eaten the night before. Who, who are you? John forced the words out between shuddering gasps. What do you want? I am the doorman, came the wheezing reply. I am here to show you the truth you have glimpsed today. The truth that lies just beyond perceptions fragile veil and separates our inescapable reality from the comforting illusion most humans prefer. John frowned, bewildered and exhausted beyond his young years. The two walked in silence once more. Around them, the neighborhood scenery steadily shifted from rows of houses to boarded-up storefronts and dilapidated tenements. The city closed in around John and the doorman until they at last reached a darkened alley. The doorman stopped in the shadowed recesses between two rundown brick buildings. He fixed John with an unnerving stare, his face an obscene mockery. The time has come for your initiation, the doorman growled. Will you accept your place among the few who walk the true path of enlightenment? Or will you flee into the blissful haze of denial like the rest? John's reply was instant, unreserved. I want to go home. Please, let me go. If the doorman heard the plea, he showed no outward sign. He raised a gnarled finger and pointed down the alley into the inky shadows at the far end. The dead end terminated in a crumbling brick wall encrusted with decades of grime and graffiti, and set into that wall a doorway. Even from a distance, John could see it. Darkness radiated from the doorway. He didn't simply mean an absence of light, a mere lack of illumination. It looked, felt, like some form of pure malevolence. A profound evil, both seductive in its intensity, yet repugnant and sickening. A gravity well of madness that he could sense instinctively in the pit of his soul. That is your gateway, should you choose to embrace it, the doorman said almost casually, as if propositioning a small child to stroll through a hellish portal where the most ordinary occurrence. John took a faltering step backward, eyes wide with panic and disbelief. No, I can't. I won't. You're insane. 
He turned and tried to run. An iron grip seized his arm, fingers digging into soft flesh. John whelped in pain as the doorman wrenched him back, spinning him around in a single, effortless motion. They stood face to mangled face. You do not yet comprehend your circumstance, child, the raspy voice growled. I did not bring you here by random chance. You have been chosen. The smell of sulfur and decay enveloped John in toxic fumes. Somewhere behind that grotesque mask of disfigurement burned the fires of an unholy revelation. The doorway represents the path all must traverse before they can achieve true insight into the reality that surrounds us. The doorman continued in silken tones, a reality created through our own delusions and lies, made solid in the perception of the masses. John's mouth gaped open, his chest hitching in little sobs of pure terror. The whispered words washed over his goose-pimpled skin like an icy fog, plucking at the final threads of his tattered sanity. To shed these illusions and glimpse the naked horror beneath, you must first abandon your previous world as you know it, the gruesome voice crooned, one foot after the other. You must walk through that doorway of your own free will and surrender to the knowledge it offers. Mercifully, the ordeal ended as a new sound echoed from the mouth of the alley. A raucous cackling from a cluster of sinister silhouettes emerging from the shadows. Twisted shapes like the doormen, but different. Distorted forms that reveled in their own grotesqueness, their faces shattered mask of what could never pass for human. A taunting chorus of mocking laughter and guttural shrieks pierced the morning haze. The doorman's head swiveled toward the group, nostrils flaring in irritation. He barked a terse command and the twisted chorus fell silent, dispersing as quickly as they'd arrived. Mere moments later, John found himself alone on a busy downtown sidewalk. Pedestrians rushed by, absorbed in their own electronic worlds. No one cast John so much as a passing glance. As if he was invisible. Less than invisible. Simply irrelevant. John trembled as adrenaline seeped from his body. The father of lies, he thought numbly. The prince of this world, all of it, just a cruel deception. John sat back from the keyboard with a start. Where had that come from? He shook his head slowly, trying to remember where his original story idea had been heading versus the strange detour his fingers had taken. A scuffling sound reached his ears, movement from the other side of the apartment door. Heart racing, John swiveled in his chair just as the door crashed open with a splintering of wood. Three figures barged into the small flat in a disorganized rush. Two were unrecognizable humanoid shapes vaguely akin to the twisted beings from the story. But the third, John caught a whiff of sulfur and his blood turned to ice water in his veins. The doorman loomed before him, more decrepit and horrific than ever. Yet John also sensed a new weariness, a resignation about the wretched creature now. Still writing your account of us, I see. The wheezing rasp sounded more tired than menacing. You should know better by now, John. That is not how the story goes. John sagged in resignation. In that moment, he achieved the clarity he'd been seeking all those years since the monsters first showed their faces. He would spend the rest of his life and the next straining against the bonds of his madness and deceit, trying to reveal the hidden world beyond the veil of comforting falsehoods that shrouded everything. But John also knew another fundamental truth, that the more he struggled, the more the doors would multiply and the ranks of tormented souls would swell. 
there could be no victory, no respite, only an eternity of service to the doorman's cruel machinations. With a rueful half-smile, John closed the laptop and complied with his fate. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more stories.